When there is a consecrated space, what it means is, there is a powerful energy. You don't want to sit with your legs open like this, it could be detrimental to you in many different ways. Even food, I'm telling you, If you stand and eat, there are many negativities to this. This question is from Claire, here at Triple I. Namaskar, Sadhguru. Why do we not place our feet towards lingas or other consecrated objects, or even people for that matter? Is it simply a matter of respect or is there a scientific basis for this? So these days they are doing that, some of them. You know, uh, in the Western cultures, when peop you meet somebody, you shook hands. Because of virus, they don't want to touch. Some are doing elbow touch, some are doing feet shaking. So it's beginning to happen, Claire, you don't have to feel disappointed. It's beginning to happen. shaking a leg at each other. Well, why uh, if there is an energetic situation, you always are asked to cross your legs, not to stretch your legs in the direction. Well, this respect thing is a more newer expression of that, essentially because you can receive anything that comes towards you in many different ways. The yogic intention always is to receive it from the higher aspects of your life. You know there is anahata, which is the meeting of two triangles. Below that is Manipuraka, Swadhisthana and Muladhara, which are all chakras representing different aspects of survival process. Survival, basic survival, reproductive process, maintenance process, all survival related. Here it comes and there are two triangles intersecting each other because this is ultimate ecstasy, this is realization, this is power, this is love and these sections, these triangles intersecting. When there is a consecrated space, what it means is, there is a powerful energy which has the possibility of transforming you. That energy must come to you always from the highest possibility that you can receive. You can receive from your sahasrar, it would be too fantastic. That is the reason the moment any Indian person goes into a temple, first thing is they want to expose this. They keep it wet. In a proper temple, they are told, even in the Dhyanalinga temple, people go wet themselves, a wet head, because they are hoping this energy will enter here. It didn't work. So, hoping here didn't work, then they will take, hoping this will have work, nothing worked, then they will say this. <laughs> but they don't want to go here, because these are survival processes. We don't want to enhance them, we want to enhance other dimensions of life, which will enhance our life, because if you survive better, if you survive, it's good, it's, it's very essential we survive. But surviving better than somebody is not a life goal. It's a waste of time because whatever you do, you're not going to survive forever. Hello? Whatever you may do, even minus the pandemic, you will not survive forever. So there is no need to invest too much in the direction of survival. So because of this, the whole culture being… understanding this dimension, they created the societies in a certain way. 
Well, today what you find is a whole distorted version of that, but fundamentally it is still there that uh, when you go to any consecrated space, you're like this because you wanted to enter here, you want to become blissful, ecstatic, doesn't work, at least peacefulness and realization. Balance and free from all kinds of poisons that are there in the world should not enter you. So essentially you want the upper part of your body above anahata to be exposed to this. You don't want to sit with your legs open like this in front of a consecrated space because that will attract a totally different kind of uh, energy towards you and that will work for you in a completely different way which is not necessarily beneficial to you, it could be detrimental to you in many different ways. That's a reason when you sit in any space where you think there is power, there is energy, you always cross your legs and sit because you want to close the lower part of the body. If you do this, you know in some way you are close to people, isn't it? Hello? Ladies, you know this. Suppose uh, somebody is talking to you, let's say, a strange… Uh, a stranger has come, a man, talking to you. Will you talk to me… him like this? <laughs> Hello? Well, some of them are doing it these days because they think what is wrong? Nothing wrong, you will… you will uh, bring a certain different type of attention to yourself. Well, uh, if the man is decent, he will do this. If you are Indian, otherwise you will say hello and maybe shake his hand. And uh, if he's acting little fresh, you'll say, hmm? Yes or no? Because you know, you may not know intellectually, but instinctively you know what kind of postures bring what kind of attention to you, isn't it? Hello? Whatever culture you have grown up in, it, in, instinctively you always know because it happens in the body. It's not that we make up in the mind, certain things happen in the body. So certain cultures have very consciously evolved these postures that if you want to this, do this, this is how you must sit, it's very, very important. Even food, I'm telling you, if you sit in front of food, one advantage you have is there is a table between you and the lower parts of your body. But if you sit with food but with legs open, like many people are standing and eating, if you stand and eat, there are many negativities to this because you must understand the longing for food is not just in your mouth. Entire body is longing for it, entire body. Well, people will say, oh, there is nothing scientific about it, is my navel uh, longing for food, is my genitals longing for food? Yes, it is. You may not understand, every part of the body is longing for food, but it must go through this route, isn't it? Hello? Similarly, there are other kinds of longings in our body, they must go through the right route, then only it… life works out in a certain way. Otherwise, you will distort life. So keeping your legs crossed whenever you see a powerful form is a very important thing. And also food, food is a very powerful thing. Hello? If you have not eaten for three days, you understand it's a very powerful thing, isn't it? Hello? It is a very powerful thing and you will see if you have not eaten for three to five days, Every cell in the body will long for food. Now if you place food here, it's not just here, mouth waters, everything works. So it's important that your legs are crossed when food comes in front of you, but you have found another way shielding yourself with a table. All right, if that is working for you, but if you're Having food, you're very hungry and food is exposed to the entire body. This is not good for you. This goes for food because we consider food as a very powerful instrument, consecrated objects and human beings who are of a certain power within themselves, you never open your legs and sit like this in front of them because 
that will bring a wrong kind of energy into your system. I'm asking you, is it good to shit? Hello, I'm asking you a question, yes. But it must come out of a certain part of your body. If it comes out from elsewhere, it will become terrible, isn't it? Hello? Similarly, food should go in, in a certain way. Food going in is not only physical food going in, food goes into you in so many ways, because the entire body is capable of this. I must tell you my experience. Once uh, I, you know, like uh, we had a major success in some business venture when I was doing this, so, uh, I was always exposed to nature wherever possible, I've been trekking, motorcycling, all this, but my partner is a nice city boy. So, we decided uh, that uh, we will go to a place where there was a reservoir, like a dam, and there's a big lake, and there are small, reasonable-sized hills. We went there and uh, we were all swimming, after swimming, I was still in my swimming trunks. I thought, let me climb the hill. It was summer months, pretty dry. So I went up the hill. <laughs> now I'm... Uh, sometimes I wonder, these days, wherever I go, somebody's carrying a bot bottle of water. At that time, I rode through the day and night. I never had a water bottle with me. We just managed just like that. So I went up the hill as I went in the summer heat, bare-bodied. I was sweating heavily, but uh, you know, I have a problem of turning back halfway. So I want to go all up, all the way up and then come down. I went up and as I was beginning to come down, I started feeling that I was suffocating with my tongue kind of bloating up. I was dehydrating so much that my tongue was becoming like a block in my breathing and I really started struggling. I badly needed at least a few drops of water. I tried to lick my own sweat, but it didn't help. When I thought I'm going to kind of literally lose my consciousness, like I'm going to faint. Then I just sat there with my eyes closed for some time. Then I realized my entire body, you know, like all the hair on my hands and legs are all going this way. It's not like goosebumps. Goosebumps means this will rise this way, this will rise this way. I just saw that all the hair pointing this way. And I just knew there's water somewhere here and I just went in search of it. I went into a small, beneath a, a rock uh, outcrop, like a small cave, a cave not for a human being. Maybe uh, rabbits and rats and those kind of animals could go and stay there, that kind of cave, just about that much. There was a small pool of water. Maybe it was a rabbit's urine or it was rainwater, I don't know what the hell it was, it didn't matter. I just put my face into it and drank up the whole thing, including the mud and everything. I sat there for a while, recovered from that and came down. Why I'm saying this is, when you really need something like food or water, you will see every cell in the body will long for it. If you pay attention, you will see thirst is not just in your mouth, it's everywhere. So. The same goes not just for food, the same goes for other types of energy also. Every cell in the body longs for it. It's very important you receive it the right, right way. So whenever you feel there is a powerful place, it's always best to cross your legs and sit down if you're sitting there, not sitting like this. You will attract something that you don't need.